For advocates of educational technology, former MIT professor Nicholas Negroponte's One Laptop Per Child initiative is one of the most intriguing projects ever to come along. At this year's NECC, educators had the chance to hear from Negroponte firsthand and also try out a prototype of his $100 laptop for themselves. One Laptop Per Child aims to build and market a low-cost laptop computer for students in developing nations as a tool to inspire learning and ultimately end poverty. As Negroponte noted, the project is not without controversy. Bill Gates has come out against it. Intel keeps slamming it. And so when these people like that don't like it, you must be doing something right. Okay. Telecommunications aren't the problem, Negroponte said. The key challenge to getting technology into the hands of every student is the cost of the device itself. What would happen, he thought, if you could get the price of a laptop computer down to $100. That was his objective. First of all, getting to $100 is not magic. 50% of the cost of your laptop is sales, marketing, distribution, and profit. And that's not unique to laptops. That's true for cell phones. That's true for PDAs. That's true for almost all consumer electronics. And in fact, in the case of laptops, depending on which one you have, it could be as high as 60%. We have none of those. 75% of the rest of your laptop is used just to support the operating system and the obesity of the software in it. It's like a fat person using their energy to move their weight. Now, this is, this is, I am not picking on Microsoft any more than Adobe, have you done a PDF recently? or any piece of software, it's outrageous. People keep adding features and features and features, and what happens is these features cost us. And I just don't need a little dog pawing its foot while the thing is searching. I don't need that. The prototype has gone through several iterations. Originally, it had a hand crank for power on the device itself. The latest version moves the hand crank to the AC adapter, so cranking it doesn't stress the machine. The device has a rubber keyboard for durability, and its display pivots on a hinge so it can be converted into ebook mode. Its Wi-Fi antenna flip up on either side like rabbit ears, and it's powered by a slimmed down, customized version of the Linux operating system. Most of the Linux distributions that are out there that are under, you know, they're pretty popular or fairly fat. Um, they include a lot of software. Um, the software that they do have isn't specifically tailored to the machines on which they'll run. Um, and so what we're trying to do with this is we're trying to strip out absolutely everything that's not necessary. Um, we're trying to tailor it directly to the hardware uh, for these laptops because I mean, we're going to have 10 million machines with all the same hardware. So it's really easy to do that. And through those mechanisms, I think we'll be able to get, um, you know, very optimized, very fast, and very small footprint. Connectivity is enabled through a peer-to-peer -peer wireless mesh network. Its software includes open source programs that encourage creativity, collaboration, and communication. The idea is that anybody can create an activity, even the children themselves, who want to make it as easy as possible. Um, but we're trying to build the idea of communication and presence into the system as a base, um, so that any activity that children create um, would be able to be shared with other children, other children would be able to participate in that. Um, and because of the mesh network um, that, that the laptops have, it will be really, really easy for children to see each other. I mean, when you turn them on, immediately you'll be able to see other children that are in the area, and you'll be able to see what those children are doing if they've decided to show that, and then you can join them and participate in the same things that they're doing. Several educators who test drove the $100 laptop said they were intrigued by its possibilities. I'm very excited. I'm very optimistic. I very much embrace the idea of bringing technology to the world. I came from a, a place, Kankakee, Illinois, where we didn't necessarily have access to this kind of a technology. And now I'm at a place where we have an opportunity to help others obtain this type of technology. So I'm excited about the entire project. I've traveled to India, China, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia. Uh, I think there's so many uses for this. There's such an inadequacy of uh, you know, technology and uh, you know, the connections that can be made. And, and let's have the kids become the, uh, the people who bring people together. Negroponte hopes to begin shipping the machines worldwide by second quarter 2007. The initial cost will be somewhat higher than $100, he said. 
When it pops out of the box, it's not going to be 100. It's going to be 138, 137, 142, who knows? The important thing is the price floats. Floating price, it's like a spot market for laptops. And the reason the price floats is currency changes, memory cost float, nickel. I mean, our, our batteries, our nickel metal hydride, Okay, 100 million batteries being made out of nickel metal hydride. The price of nickel went up 20% between April and May. So clearly those things float the price and we will guarantee that it will keep going down. Our target is to hit 100 by the end of 2008 and hit 50 2010. So that's actually more important. It's the slope. It's not the out of the gate price. And what we promise not to do is keep adding features and lifting the price. We're going to keep the features constant and watch the price go down. Though the device ultimately will be available here in the United States, Negroponte explained why he's targeting developing nations first. A lot of people ask me, why not the USA? A um, number of reasons. If you want to do a laptop project in the USA, buy a $400 Intel laptop. You don't need the $100. The difference between $100 and $400 is noise uh, in most school systems in the United States. When you look at how much you spend per child per year, uh, to the extra $300 is, is just not that significant compared to the rest of the world. And also there are things in the rest of the world, there are problems like no power, no telecom, and no teachers that are just very, very different. Even before the $100 laptop is available here, its impact is likely to be felt. Negroponte hopes its scale of distribution will spur software makers to write educational programs that run on the Linux desktop. Educators can contribute their own ideas to the project at wiki.laptop.org.